The worst climate in Africa is found here in the Bombashudi Valley, which has an annual rainfall of 100 inches per day. But today, the sun is shining brightly, and it beats down on a fearful sight. That is Ursula, wife of George of the Jungle, tied to a stake in the Bombashudi village, and you know what that means. We ain't playing ring a old Jack. Why are you doing this frightful thing? Lady, it hasn't rained here for almost 24 hours. We figure the great Juju has got a mad on for some reason. Ergo, we gotta make a sacrifice. Will sacrificing me bring rain? Maybe not. But what else are you gonna do on a hot Wednesday? You got a match on you? But nothing much escapes the sharp eyes of the Tuki Tuki bird, and he flew off to carry the news to George of the Jungle. <laughs> Hold it, Leon. What that? Tuki Tuki. Tuki Tuki? Tuki Tuki. You kidding? Hey, come quick. What is it, John? Birds say, ok, ok, ik, ik, Tuki Tuki. Ursula? Captured by the Bumbershooters? Yes. Question is, what do we do? No, who is Ursula? George, Ursula is your wife. Wife? Your mate, George. Oh, him. Her. Her. And you must go to her rescue. First, call faithful Shep. <whistles> here, Shep. Good doggy. Here, boy. <whistles> Come, we go rescue. What's his name? Ursula. Ursula. Same time tomorrow, Leon. We pick it up where we left off. <whistles> Yes, isn't he? Patient, folks. This wood is terribly wet. Don't you know that all I have to do is raise my voice to call George of the Jungle? Who's he? You don't know about George of the Jungle? The TV reception here is terrible, sweetie. It's the wet wood. But at that moment... <laughs> I'll tell you something. The great Juju ain't gonna like this one bit. Your fun, dear, but shouldn't we escape now? Oh, all righty. Here, Shep. Home, Shep. Mighty George had done it again. Once more, his victory cry rang out over the jungle. <laughs> but George had momentarily forgotten the first law of survival in the jungle. Never stand up on a running elephant. Back, Shep! Go back! It was no use. <laughs> Shep was headed for the barn and couldn't be stopped. George, on the other hand, could. The show will continue in just a moment, folks, with a slight change in the cast. Why you do this? Do I have to explain the plot twice? Very well. We are making a sacrifice to the great Juju so he'll give us rain. Suppose George make it rain. Ha, 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 You're putting me on, right? What are you, some kind of Juju? Okay, you got five minutes. Either you make it rain, or it's goodbye Charlie, Charlie. And drawing upon his great secret jungle lore, the ape man set about bringing rain to the Bomba Shooty village. First, George bombard clouds with rocks. Clouds cry, make rain. Oh boy. George fired, and sure enough, it rained. Rocks. You got three minutes. Swiftly, George used every surefire trick in the book to make it rain. He set out a picnic lunch. All he got was ants. He paraded in a brand new hat. All he got was compliments. It's you. It's you. He organized a doubleheader baseball game. This always bring rain. He got a shutout, but no rain. In desperation, he even polished the chief's limousine to a high gloss. No what? No rain. Well, on with the sacrifice. But the witch doctor still couldn't get the fire lit. Well, maybe some other time. No, no, maybe some other way. Like what? like blowing you to smithereens with this here dynamite. Smithereens? That anywhere near Nairobi? But first, let's get you away from the middle of town. The angry bombershooters took George to a high cliff overlooking the village. Everybody, see all right down there? Good, good. Taking up a safe position on the bank of the Mbwibwi River, the witch doctor prepared to sacrifice George. Oh, great, Juju. Let us have a little rain. Even if it just rains George of the jungle. Does the mighty jungle king still have one trick up his sleeve? George not even have sleeve, just muscle. 
See? With his arms free, George grabbed for the dynamite and tipped it over out of reach. But the steep hillside caused the can to roll downhill right to the bank of the Mbwibi River. This one is on me, old great Jojo. That explosion did more than get rid of the evil witch doctor. It blocked the Mbwibi River, which then took a new course, right over the cliff above the Bumbershooty village. Now that's what I call a real George Rain. Glad you like it, Chief. Now us Bumbershooties can go back to our normal way of life. Doing what? Complaining about the weather. As a reward for his services, George was made honorary witch doctor of the Bumbershooty tribe. Yes, this my badge of office. What is it, George? Very powerful charm. Keep polar bears away. Don't be ridiculous, George. There are no polar bears within 10,000 miles of Africa. Sure. See how well it works? This pocket-sized bit of greenery in the middle of downtown Pittsburgh is Sherwood Park. Pittsburghians love to come to Sherwood Park to feed the squirrels. The squirrels live on nuts. But Sherwood Park has a nut that lives on squirrels. Okay, heist them shot, eh? This is a stick-up. Yeah, hand over them peanuts. This cowardly knave is Rotten Hood, the bandit of Sherwood Park. And this is his merry band of man, Fried Tucker. Well, Fried Tucker, let's count the swag. What have we got? Eight peanuts, two almonds, and a gum wrapper. Not bad for a week's work, eh? <laughs> it ain't good, Rotten Hood. Uh, perhaps you're right. Hmm. I've got it, Fried Tucker. Let's switch from squirrels to people. We'll rob from the rich. Yeah, yeah. And keep it. Is that good? It ain't bad. Very well. Ma'am? Yes, sir. Count off. One. Good. Now that we're all here, let's get started. And going from the park to the surrounding skyscrapers, Rotten Hood started on his cavalcade of crime. On the eighth floor, he robbed the famous shoe manufacturer, Gypsy Boots. On the 17th floor, he robbed Sam Prince Metal, the metal prince. On the 23rd floor, he robbed Bayonder Reef, wealthy society leader. On a 30th floor window ledge, he robbed a squirrel. I'm just keeping my hand in. Meanwhile, up in the penthouse in the sumptuous study of Henry Cabot, Henhouse III... Here's the dinner things. What's the news, Fred? Just some stuff about Rotten Hood and his band. Hmm. Wonder who's on trombone. Fred had just put down the groceries when... Put up your paws. Where did you come from? The grocery sacks. And next time, Rotten Hood, you get the one with the frozen vegetables. The next thing Henry knew... What is it, Fred? Don't tell me. You're imitating a unicorn. No, I'm imitating a witness to a robbery. Who's being robbed? You. Rotten Hood made me open the kitchen safe and give him the housekeeping money. How much? Two million dollars. Hmm, a trifling sum. But it's the principle of the thing, Fred. This looks like a job for... Super chicken. You get the super sauce, I'll don my super suit. Is the super sauce. <laughs> hmm, must be a weak batch. Doesn't have the old zing. Oh, well, as long as it lets me fly. <laughs> Funny, he's flying straight down. And small wonder, this is steak sauce. Super chicken. Wait! He didn't wait. Sorry, Super Chicken. That was really steak sauce. How do you like that? Well done, Fred. Here's the super sauce. Drink, drink. <laughs> and in seconds, the common chicken was transformed into... Super Chicken! What happened to you? I was standing a little too close when the super sauce took effect. You knew the job was dangerous when you took it, Fred. Come on! <laughs> With that, the mighty chicken took to the air to track down Rotten Hood. You drive, Fred, and I'll think. 
What about? I'm trying to figure out where Rotten Hood is hiding. Why don't you use your supervision? If I had any supervision, I wouldn't be running around in this funny suit. I'll help you think, too. That was a mistake, for Fred wasn't equipped to do both. I've told you before, Fred. If you drive, don't think. If you think, don't drive. But as luck would have it, the Super Coupe had landed right in Sherwood Park. Don't move. We're not alone. I thought you said they'd never find us here. Even the best laid plans go bad, Rotten. Let's go. <whistles> Rotten Hood's arrow stuck to the side of the tallest office building in downtown Kansas City. Super Chicken wasn't far behind. Don't be alarmed, folks. We represent the law. Look at that mask. It's a holdup. He's a robber. He's a crook. Oh, come on. That Super Chicken. Never mind, Fred. They don't watch television much here in Kansas City. But a super chicken dashed out. It's them! All right, Rotten Hood. Now you're going to get a taste of my superpowers face to face. But as the mighty chicken started for Rotten Hood, a dreadful thing happened. His super sauce ran out. Where's all that big chicken talk now, Mr. Big Mouth? That hurts. The weary chicken tried to defend himself, but it was to no avail. Rotten applied his famous hood lock and began to squeeze. But at that moment, faithful Fred dashed to the rescue. Drink it, drink it. Not more steak sauce. It's the real thing, Super Chicken. It's Super Sauce. Sure enough, it was. The beaten bird once again became Super Chicken. Let me at him. Come on and fight. Easy, champ. The fight's over. What happened to Rotten Hood? He was standing too close when the super sauce took effect. He knew the job was dangerous when he took it, Fred. Rotten Hood and his not-so-merry man got 20 years to think over their crimes. I've got it. Next time, let's steal from the poor. Oh, shut up. And the mighty bird against prejudice continues his fight for law and order. So when you hear that cry in the sky... <laughs> You'll know it's Super Chicken. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, let me tell you why, he's the best of all good guys. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, in the Thunderbolt we slap her once he's on your tail. He won't quit because you know there's no such word as fail. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the starting line of the Sir Thomas Cup Cup race. And here with a word to the contestants is that grand old sportsman, Sir Thomas Cup himself. Ahoy, seafarers. This year's winner will take home the diamond-studded silver Sir Thomas Cup Cup. Yay! $50,000 in cash. Yay! And a year's supply of Sir Thomas Cup's jams and jellies made from reconstituted catfish whiskers. Yeah! Now, all contestants to the starting line. Another of the world's most exciting sports is Tom Slick. And here he is. Hi, racing fans. Tom Slick, what have you done to your race car? I've converted the Thunderbolt grease slapper to a supersonic speedboat, Marigold. Isn't she a sock dollager? It will never work, Tom. There's no such word as never in ocean speedboat racing, Marigold. Climb aboard. See you later, Gertie. I doubt it, hon. The boats are approaching the starting line. There's the ten-pipe tide ripper and the back-burning beach bunny. And there is the twin-pot surf slipper driven by the internationally known sissy, Anson Snobsworthy the fifth and his girlfriend, Wilma Willow. Anson, you couldn't be Tom Slick if he were tied hand and foot and sealed in cement. Oh, no. All I have to do is press one of these buttons and I'll leave Tom Slick at the starting line. Uh-oh, there's the signal. L let's see you pull out of this one, Tom Slick. Ready, you sea dogs. Time again for the raising of the sail, the weighing of the anchor, the battening of the hatches, the draining of the scuppers, and the... But let's bid farewell to Sir Thomas and join the racers. The twin part surf slipper has jumped to an early lead. Followed by the back-burning beach bunny and the ten-pipe tide ripper. What about Tom Slick? 
That Thunderbolt Grease Slapper is still at the starting line. Don't fret, Tom, baby. Dirty Crowler will spring you loose. Beat it, old lady. Young man, you should always speak respectfully to an old lady. Especially an old lady who knows karate. Now, whoop! Tom, Gertie Growler is overboard. You'll have to stop. There's no such word as stop in speedboat racing, Marigold. How about slow down? There goes the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper and trailing behind her, Gertie Growler. Don't stop, Tom, boy. I'll just ski along here on my hippie boots. I told you I'd leave Tom Slick at the starting line. Then who's that just behind us? There's nobody just behind us. Right, now he's in front of us. Follow us, Snobsworthy. We'll show you the way. <laughs> Anson, you can't even beat an old lady in tennis shoes. Those are hippie boots, Wilma, but no matter. When I push this button, it's goodbye, Tom Slick. Ridiculous. The only way you could win now would be to torpedo his boat. There's the signal, Captain. I see it, Bilge Rat. Get the torpedo ready to fire. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye? That's very seamanlike, Bilge Rat. No, it's not. You are standing on my foot. Aye, aye, aye. Enough of your japery. Run up the ladder and see if you can spot the converted Thunderbolt grease slapper from the conning tower. But, my captain, you... No but, Bilge Rat, or you're liable to get my goat. <laughs> up the ladder. That's better. Now, what was it you were going to say? I was just going to say, you forgot the surface. Oh. Well, anybody can make one little mistake. The converted Thunderbolt Grease Slapper is widening its lead. Drat. So that's your plan, to cheat. Remember, Anson, cheaters never prosper. Why haven't those fools blown the Thunderbolt out of the water? You mean those fools? They're the ones. I have an idea, Anson. What is it? Give up. No! When I push this last button, the race is mine no matter what you say. Yeah, it would take a sea monster to stop Tom Slick now. You called? Well, Tom Slick, you've done it again. The race isn't over yet, Gertie. Tom, look! Hi, my name is Ringo Starfish with one R. I'm gonna swallow you so my employer, Anson Snobsworthy the Fifth, can win the race. Your employer? What's he paying you? $50,000 and the Sir Thomas Cup Cup. How about the year's supply of Sir Thomas gums and jellies made from reconstituted catfish whiskers? Blech! Is that part of the prizes? Sure is, kiddo. Why, that's my favorite food. He tried to cheat me. Now, Tom, move out. Right, Gertie. And so with great pride and extreme pleasure, I... Thief! Call the police! But, Sir Thomas, I'm Tom Slick. I won the cup. And you've got it, Tom boy. Anson, a turtle with wax feet could beat you. Hi! <clears throat> what are you doing here? I'm going to swallow you because you tried to cheat me out of a year's supply of Sir Thomas Cup's jams and jellies made from reconstituted catfish whiskers. Yeah. Anson, cheating on your own cheaters, why... Wilma Willow, shut up. Oh, Anson, you're so masterful. I am? You don't know how long I've waited for you to tell me to shut up. Oh, your love has made a new man of me, Wilma. Let's go home and leave the wraithing to Tom Slick. You didn't swallow them. No, even I couldn't swallow a happy ending like that. <laughs>